So the head gasket is a relatively thin, very cheap component, but it is critical in the smooth running and reliability of your engine. So in this video, we're just gonna look at the question of how do you know if your head gasket is starting to fail? There's a few common telltale signs. And we're also gonna look at the head gasket what it is, why it is such an essential part of the engine and how it's evolved over the years. And we're just gonna give you a checklist and method to go through so you can systematically identify any potential faults that you've got there on your head gasket. So head gaskets are crucial components. They're typically made of metal or steel components, and they often have an outer layer made of a, a rubber-like substance that is designed to compress and seal. Years ago, they used asbestos in the construction of gaskets, but due to health concerns, these have been phased out. Graphite has also been used in the construction of the gasket. But essentially, you've got the head of the engine and the block, and the two surfaces mate together. Now, between those two surfaces, you've got channels that take the water, the coolant that runs around the engine. You've got the oil channels, and you've also got the area where the compression is happening within the cylinders themselves. So there's a lot of pressure going on between these two surfaces. So the head gasket effectively operates as a sandwich, just sealing those chambers and making sure that everything stays completely isolated. Now, the engine is working under extremely high pressures, so that gasket is really taking a beating. Modern gaskets are actually very, very complex structures. They often have up to around five layers and an elastomo with something like Viton on the contact surfaces. So think about what's going on inside the engine. It's getting hotter, it's expanding, it's contracting. The different parts of the engine, the block itself and the head are often expanding at different rates in most engines. So there's a lot of potential problems there where those two surfaces mate together. And the gasket really acts as that nice little buffer, just keeping everything properly isolated. So what are the problems that you have with the gasket? Well, if the gasket starts to fail, you will get a leak across those areas. So you may get oil leaking into the water. You may get water leaking into the oil. You may get the compression from the engine leaking into the oil, to the water, or even into another cylinder. So there's quite a few different ways that the gasket can fail. So if any of those seals starts to break down, it will start to cause major problems inside the engine. So what are the typical signs to look out for? Well, an obvious one is white smoke coming from the tailpipe. White smoke is often caused by water, water vapor, and the coolant getting into the cylinders will create a lot of white smoke. One of the big tells you've got a head gasket problem is if you look at the expansion bottle or you remove the cap on the radiator, be very careful, don't do it when it's hot. But what you're looking for is bubbling within those areas. So if you've got bubbling, that would indicate high pressure that's going from the compression in the engine into the coolant system. So that will typically identify that you've got a head gasket problem straight away. You may notice water coming from the exhaust or a sweet smell coming from the exhaust. So maybe the gasket is just starting to go. You have got the excessive clouds of white smoke yet so that might be an early telltale sign to watch out for. If you look at the engine itself you may notice leaks around the gasket area because it doesn't always leak internally. Sometimes the oil pressure inside the engine will start to leak to the outside so you'll notice oil or even coolant dribbling down the engine block. If you're starting to lose coolant and there's no obvious leaks of coolant around the engine, then that again can be a sign that the head gasket is starting to fail. When you remove the oil filler cap and look underneath, if you've got a telltale white mayonnaise substance, that usually indicates that water is starting to mix with the oil. So that's obviously degrading the oil. That's gonna cause lots of other problems within the engine if it's not addressed quickly. But that's often the first sign that people actually notice that they've got a head gasket issue. You'll often get an engine that's overheating. We also said about bubbling through the coolant um, being a symptom of a head gasket failure. So those bubbles will affect the flow of coolant around. It may stop the water pump, for example, from operating. It may cause locks within the system that prevent the circulation. So you may notice the engine suddenly warming up or suddenly cooling down or just 
erratic temperature fluctuations or the temperature may be running away and may never properly cool itself. In some cases as well, you'll get a loss of power, particularly where compression is leaking from inside the engine. If it's not compressing the air fuel charge sufficiently, you will be down on power, effectively losing out. And that may cause the car to be running rich or running lean and can create lots of other issues. So poor running, poor idling and other issues can also be indicators that there is a head gasket problem. So diagnostic checks, the foolproof way of telling if you've got a head gasket problem is to examine the coolant. If there's evidence of exhaust gases coming into the coolant, that is almost certainly an indicator of a head gasket failure. Those bubbles that you see in the coolant system inside the expansion bottle or within the radiator are usual identifiers of a blown head gasket. If you do a compression test on the engine, that makes sure that the cylinders are all compressing at the same rate. And that can often indicate there's a head gasket leak, but compression loss can also result from problems with the rings, with the valves, the way the valves seal inside the engine. So it's not a foolproof way of determining if you've got a head gasket problem, but it can help you to identify the type of head gasket leak that you've got. So addressing the issue, you obviously need to remove the head, change the gasket and replace everything. Always use new bolts, never reuse the old bolts. The bolts typically tend to stretch and you don't get the same sort of strength when you reuse a stretched bolt. You need to also to torque it to the correct level and make sure it's torqued in the correct order. You're looking to uniform pressure on the head as it seals down onto the block and compressing the gasket correctly. If that's not done right, you're just going to have another leak very, very quickly after you've had that work done. Simply swapping the head gasket is often not the solution. If the head gasket has failed, you've often also got a resulting cracked cylinder head, a warped cylinder head. So get the head properly checked before you put it all back together. It's usually the head that takes the beating from the excess heat and it's often been the cause of the head gasket failure. So getting the head machined as well, they call this skimming the head and it just takes a layer of metal off, just making sure that the bottom of the head is completely smooth. You obviously need to check valve clearances and other components within the engine if you've taken off a lot of material because it's been quite precisely designed by the manufacturer and there are only limited tolerances that you can work within. So head gasket sealers, people ask me about head gasket sealers, what they are. So effectively, they will be a gunk that goes into the head gasket area through the coolant, through the oil, there's various paper that can be applied as well. And the idea is that these fill up the gaps and they seal it and prevent the head gasket leak from being there. Now, these are only temporary solutions. They are not a permanent fix to the problem. So they may help you to limp home if you've got a head gasket problem, but they certainly should not be viewed as a permanent solution to the problem because they will typically fail again. You often line yourself up for bigger problems if you've done a temporary fix like that and you've assumed it's a permanent fix. So the big biggest cause of head gasket failure is generally the engine overheating. If you've allowed the temperature of the engine to overheat excessively, that will generally cause warping within the metal components in the engine. And the head gasket is obviously the weak area that takes the beating from that. Poorly designed head gaskets, inferior materials and improper installation can also lead to premature gasket failure. It's one of those things you want to catch early on. So hopefully in this video, we've just identified those typical symptoms and helped you to catch the problem of a blown head gasket nice and early on. So you can avoid these run on costs that you get where it's been ignored for some period of time. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you if you're interested in getting the best out of your engine. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned to the channel.